meditation is not medication it is something more yes it helps it heals it puts things in perspective it makes it possible to experience things by being in the present moment which is the main problem with a lifestyle that is constantly pushing you outward what is the underlying problem that we recognize as stress anxiety uncertainty fear worry all kinds of things it is a lack of understanding of who we are it is the missing of the most important aspect of life it is to be in the now to be available to the experience of life in the now you can deal with anything because you are there as a vast presence cushioning your thoughts and emotions you can deal with them but the moment you step away from the now and start imagining problems adding more to your fears and worries you enter into an endless loop of imaginative suffering we don't understand how much of our suffering is imagined is created by us for ourselves what meditation does is it removes that unnecessary suffering your body will still experience pain your mind will still experience agit agitation as long as you are alive you will be in some form of disturbance because another word for disturbance is life if you remove all disturbance life loses all its meaning if you are perfectly still complete nothing has to be added nothing has to be removed you are in a state of enlightenment anything below that even 2 inches below that state there is disturbance meditation is not just a medicine to remove disturbance it is a way of growing wings it is a way of flying higher the problem is it is hard for us to imagine what flying is because we don't know what that means it's like a baby crawling conceptualizing walking there is no way and you are explaining running how will it comprehend it but if you were to give instructions specific instructions and say if you do this if you do these things you would be able to walk you would be able to run and this proves we have tested your body we have tested your bones you have tested your muscles it is actually possible for you to stand on two legs try doing it is this how we approach life how did we learn to walk how did we learn to run how did we learn everything we have learned we did it by doing it we did not ask for proofs we did not ask for validation we trusted in the process we emulated certain behaviors that we were able to observe and we were able to do all these things 
Now, why is it when it comes to meditation, we want proofs? Oh, medically, it is proven that it helps to, helps to reduce stress. It helps to reduce the symptoms of irritable ball syndrome. What has meditation got to do with all this? There are simpler ways of dealing with physical problems. Go to the doctor, take some medicine. The purpose of meditation is not to cure the physical sickness. It is to cure the sickness of the mind. It is to cure the sickness of desires, sickness of discontentment, uncertainty, fear, to transcend the very plane of problem. We are crawling on the floor. Our ultimate destination is to fly, but we won't get there by asking questions about flight when we cannot even comprehend it. Meditation is one such thing. What meditation can give you, you cannot even imagine it in your wildest dreams. Because it is beyond the capabilities of the mind to understand something that is a part of the problem it has created itself. Meditation deals with the problem of the mind. Not problems created by the mind. It deals with the problem, the mind. It works at a fundamental existential level. What it does is it expands the mind. It infuses it with existential intelligence. Not conceptual, not theoretical. Can meditation help to heal certain physical ailments? Of course it can. There is enough research, enough study. In fact, it is said that when you study the brain after it has been introduced to meditation, after it has spent enough time in meditation, you can identify specific regions connected to emotions, connected to fear, anxiety, showing something different happening, which correlates with the changing levels of emotional stability. Meditation brings emotional stability. It does so much more than that. Firstly, we do not fully understand what the body is. For us, the body is merely a functioning physical mechanism. We do not see the body as the extension of the mind. We do not see that the ailments of the mind get settled in the body. We aggravate and exaggerate mental problems to a point where they become physical. Of course, the physical body can acquire diseases and disturbances that has nothing to do with the mind. As a part of its existential karmic movement, it goes through its own problems. But we don't need meditation to clear out those problems. How many problems will you anticipate? Because you never know. You cannot go to meditation and say, I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to get kidney stones. It's pointless. So what is it that you are expecting? We are expecting the problems 
that originate in the mind to not amplify and become unbearable like stress like anxiety unnecessary worrying about things that have not yet happened just anticipatory problems how does meditation work what is meditation in the first place it is not something external that you add it is a way of staying as close as possible to truth mind is a lie the stories the mind remembers the desires the mind pursues has nothing to do with reality it is not existential mind is interested in creating a world of its own it is not interested in our world it is interested in its own reality that is where the problem is to come to the now where the mind and body meet where there is a possibility to experience things just the way they are happening not the way the mind is wanting us to remember that's what meditation does and this is only the starting point if this is the only thing you're looking for then the amount of effort that is required will seem way too much why do i have to put in so much effort to reduce a little bit of stress why don't i find simple alternate shortcuts but what if meditation has a higher purpose what if it is about experiencing life in its entirety so completely that you transcend even death not just fear of death the entire mechanics of death body dies but what about the self what about the sensation of beingness you are not just a bundle of physical sensations you are also you now what is this you is it just an idea is it just something that is bound to the body which will eventually die with the body or is it something that cannot be destroyed until you understand that fully you just keep coming back again and again as buddha calls the samsara of life and death for buddha meditation was not a way of dealing with his emotions he did not sit in meditation to just address the problems that he was experiencing at the physical level he looked at meditation as the solution to the ultimate problem the problem of life itself why this why this body why this mind why am i alive why should i die why should i suffer why should i grow old he assumed nothing for us we assume many things about life growing old dying suffering we don't question these we are trying to figure out how to accept all this pain and suffering and manage them and we look at meditation as a way of managing our problems what if meditation doesn't help you to manage your problems it wants to remove your problems completely it does not believe in temporary solutions it knows what's the ultimate solution is 
until you get to that ultimate solution, it slowly pushes you along the path. That is why the progress is not immediate and spectacular. It seems like a never ending process. Why? Because something very deep and existential is happening. Your karmic impression of life and death, which has become so deeply rooted in how you see things, how you experience things, has to be eroded first. It does not look at life negatively, but it looks at attachment to life, which is an extension of the mind, the ego, has the problem. There is no problem with the body. There's no problem with the mind. But what do we suffer? More than just the mind and just the body. We suffer our own understanding and misunderstanding of them. It's because we do not understand the mind and the body fully, we are in conflict. Lao Tzu says, to the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. A mind that is perfectly still is a mind free of suffering. Meditation is the path you take, the methods you use, the techniques you use to still the waves of the mind. 